All right, got one more uh, Lightroom CC edit for you here. Uh, we're gonna use the adjust the, the brush tool to uh, really focus your attention. And the, the, the technique I'm gonna show you is called selective color. And what that does is it makes everything in the image black and white, except for one thing that's in color, okay? So obviously that creates here, look at this thing that's in color, everything else, not so much. Um, and I'm gonna use that as a baseline uh, then to help not make it look like an effect, but make it look more subtle. So let's start with teaching how the, the effect works. It's three steps, super easy, super, super easy. So we're gonna use the brush tool in Lightroom CC. Uh, that is um, the one that looks like a brush. And if you put your mouse over, it says brush. Or if you just wanna click your keyboard, it's the letter B on your keyboard. All right, so here's step one. We're gonna set up our brush. This is step one. We're gonna get a really big brush. So make your brush, I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse, uh, make it huge, make it huge. Uh, mine's at 57, it looks like. I don't know how that works relative to anything else. And uh, where else do I want? I want the other, uh, so. Uh, I need to have the other controls for the brush visible. So I'm just clicking on the triangle that's to the right of the brush size number. And that'll show me my feather, which I want at around 50. My flow, which I want at 100. And my density, which I also want at 100. I just wanna basically spray paint this whole image really fast. And I want it to do as quickly as possible. And auto mask is also turned off for this. Auto mask is off, all right? So set your brush up this way, that's step one. Step two is to uh, dial in the effect I want. So I'm not, I haven't brushed yet, I'm just dialing in the effect. And here's the effect I want. I want minus 100 saturation. So I'm taking all the color out of the image when I paint. That's step two. Saturation goes to minus 100 in the brush panel. So the nothing should change yet. Nothing should change yet. All right, that's step two. Um, here's step three. I guess there's four steps. Sorry, there's four steps if I count them this way. Here's step three. Just paint on the image with black and white. So just click, hold, one, two, three. It's all black and white. It should be that fast. Big brush click somewhere, psh, brush everywhere, it's all black and white, okay? Here's step four. I'm gonna change the brush from painting to erasing and erase where I want the color to come back. So I change to the erase tool that's up here right under the brush uh, text at the top and click on the icon that's the eraser. I'm gonna turn auto mask on to get this started. I want density and flow at 100. My feather right around 50 as always. And then my size, I want much smaller because I'm gonna paint on this leaf, this one leaf here. So I'm just gonna go around the edge. Remember how you color in coloring in grade school, you go slow around the edge. The detail part, I'm not super clean here, but that's all right. Go around the edge, I have the auto mask turned on to help me be steady with my mouse painting. Once you've got the edge all painted, then I'm gonna turn auto mask off and make my brush a little bigger with my scroll wheel and paint the color back in on the rest of the leaf here, okay? So it should go pretty quick. Boom, we've got a selective color. So the leaf is the only thing that has color on it Everything else is black and white. So you're focusing attention on the leaf. Now there's, I every once in a while I'll do this because it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, it looks neat. But here's what I, I'll, I'll also use this as a starting point to get it out and then I'm gonna just undo the drama of it. Okay, here's what I mean. So I'm switching back to the brush well, I don't really, it doesn't matter which one. I, I have the brush active. So now what I'm gonna do is undo some of the drama of this. So instead of minus 100 saturation, I'm gonna take my saturation to about, well, I'm just looking at it, about minus 50. 
So I'm pulling most of the color, a good chunk of the color out of these other rocks. Because when we started, if we just leave it at zero, everything is the same richness of color. So it's kind of hard to see that leaf. But if I just dial it back to about minus 50, let's help a little bit more. So I'm going to take the exposure on uh, everything in the photo but the leaf and go a little darker. Not, don't do that, but just a little bit. We're nudging. We're being subtle here. And again, everything else is darker, so now the leaf is brighter. Easy, right? One more little thing here to kind of finish this off. I've got another, I think it's another leaf or it's a red rock up here that's pulling some attention because it's this similar color tones. So I'm going to do a new brush up there uh, with just uh, minus 100 saturation up there. Tiny brush. And I'm just going to just hide that. It helps when you make the noises. Uh, it goes a lot faster. So here's where we started on this photo. Here's where we're at. So now that leaf is super dominant, easy to see, obviously the subject. Again, shaping attention with light and color in Lightroom CC. This is called selective color. If I want to, again, to, to, to be completely selective color, I'm going to come back here to the uh, original pin and click on it to make it active. It's active when it has the white dot in the center. And here's, again, what selective color, saturation, minus 100. But I'm going to come back to where I like it at minus 50. All right. So that's the selective color effect inside a Lightroom CC. Uh, use it for drama or use it in, like I have here, to uh, help shape attention without being fully special effect. Hope that's helpful. If you have suggestions, tips, comments, questions, leave them in the, the comment area below. I'd love to have conversation with you about this stuff. So Lightroom CC, lots of cool stuff in here to help you tell stories with your photos. I hope you found this helpful so far, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.